Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Boston and we are doing a review of the Camp Snap camera today. And I have been sitting on doing this review for a little bit because I've been trying to do more concert photography. And this video is not about concert photography, but I do like this camera. I do want to talk about it and hopefully this is helpful for people that are thinking about buying it. So we're gonna jump right into this review, but first I'm gonna insert a video of me unboxing this camera and talking a little bit about it. So that video is here. Okay, so it's been a long day for me, but this camera came early in the mail and you know that I can't unbox something without recording it for you guys. So this is the Camp Snap camera. This is supposed to be a digital version of like a disposable uh, film camera. And I am so excited to see it because all of the images that are on their social media look really good. They look like disposable film cameras. Um, and if this is just an SD card and a battery in reusable format, I am going to love that. So I'm super excited to open it. I am going to be hanging out with one of my friends tomorrow and I am super excited about bringing this with me. Um, I did go to Yosemite the other day and I'm bummed that I didn't have it, but I'm sure I'll take it on other trips. So this is the box it comes in. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. Okay, so we got our instructions manual. Those that know, no, I'm never gonna read that. And then, oh, this must be a cord. This must be power. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Pretty basic USB-C, I think, power cord. Ooh, it is so small. Look at it. And I got it in the black format. Oh my gosh, it's like as light as a disposable camera. Um, very, very lightweight. Wow. Okay. So there's a speaker on the back. Not necessarily sure what that's going to do yet. Um, the thing that I love about this is it does have a flash. So there's a flash on the front. So you should get the disposable photo flash type. Um, so on, off, and auto, so that's great. Um, viewfinder as normal, nice little shutter button. Oh, it flashed at me. Um, it just takes a micro SD or mini SD and then the plug in on the bottom. So very, very simple, but it feels good. It's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in um, and charge it so I can bring it with me to hang out with my friend tomorrow. We're gonna take lots of photos on it and I'll show you guys what the photos look like. But I'm super excited about testing this out and comparing it to my other kind of like film options. But if this works, this is something that I'm gonna start bringing to like fun concerts and venues to just like throw in my bag and bring in because I should be able to bring this in everywhere. So super excited. It actually like looks and feels a lot nicer than what I was expecting. Like this is really soft. It's just really nice. Nice little thumb imprint here. I like it. I'm excited. Okay, so I'll be back tomorrow with some more detail about this camera and we'll dive into it. Yay! Okay, so this is the one that I got. I have had this in my bag for probably the last month, um, bringing it around with me just when I'm like hanging out with friends, when I wanna have some cool photos of something other than what's on my cell phone. I'm not super fond of the iPhone photos. I think that they lack character. So what I was really hoping for was something that was really cute, easy to use, that had a little bit more character to the photos. Since I'm a photographer, I'm a concert photographer, I'm not interested in like adding this necessarily to my portfolio, my clients. I'm not trying to make really, really great shots out of this. I'm just really using this for social media and seeing if there's cute content that I can add here and there. First impressions, I really like the colors. I like the style of this camera a lot. 
I thought it was really cute, really easy to use. The problem for me lies in it really struggles in dark spaces and dark times of day. I kind of assumed this, this was really hard for cameras and sensors and really any style camera to do dark, dark lighting, but I brought it out to Joshua Tree and you can see that the images are just really, really grainy and it just really struggled to capture the time of day. I thought that this was fine. This was like a little bit after sunset. Your visible eye could see still fairly well, but the camera was really struggling and it was really grainy. Now if you compare that to a bright sunny day, you get these beautiful vibrant colors. So the Camp Snap camera for like bringing it to an outdoor camp, an outdoor activity, like a middle of the day time of day event is going to get you really beautiful results because it seems like it's really set up for that bright summer sunny afternoon because you can just get beautiful beautiful colors with it. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is the framing. With all of these kind of like little cameras I really struggle with getting the framing right. For a while I thought it was me uh, <laughs> but I have done some testing on this to see where the viewfinder is and what my actual framing is in camera. What I did is I put up a piece of paper that had roughly the same dimensions as a photo coming out of this camera and tried to take a few pictures of it, framing it center, really exact, as close as I could get it. The problem with this camera is that it actually shoots further down than the viewfinder. This is pretty common. Obviously, viewfinders up here, the lens is down here. So whenever you frame something, you're actually shooting a little bit lower than what your framing actually is. This was really problematic for me because I'm trying to frame like trees up in the sky and I would cut off the top of the trees when that was not intentional for me. So if you're trying to take a picture and you're cropping right at the top of someone's head when you look through the viewfinder, uh, it's probably going to crop right at their eyes just because of how the viewfinder sees the image versus the actual lens what you're taking a picture of. So that's something for me to keep in mind as I'm using it. It's something for you to keep in mind if you have this camera to really kind of like counter that difference when you're doing your framing. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is how many pictures of my back this thing takes. This button on the top here here is the on and off button. So when you press and hold this, this is how you turn on the camera. So really, really important because this thing turns on in my bag all the time. I'll be walking around and you'll hear that beep beep and I'll know that this thing is taking pictures in my bag. And I have so many of these pictures. They're just everywhere. It happens to me all the time. So I wish that they put this camera out actually with this being the on and off button. This would make a little bit more sense to me. It wouldn't turn on in my bag like that. It's just kind of annoying to come back from a day, plug this in, and I have 30 photos of my bag. I don't know if this is a problem for everyone, but it is definitely a problem or an annoyance for me that I have all of those photos. And the last thing that I wanted to note is exactly how loud this thing is. So it is kind of annoying to take a picture and you hear the shutter sound. Um, so I'll do that again. They did release a software update that removes that sound. For some reason, I have somehow managed to default back to the other one and now it makes that sound again and I cannot find their firmware update to remove the sound. That sound is really annoying for me because like I want to bring this to events and parties and take photos of people and I feel like I'm really intrusive with that sound so I wish that this didn't have the shutter sound. That being said it is really hard to tell when you're actually taking a photo because I'm clicking now. And that's pretty significant lag between when I'm clicking down on the shutter and when that actual sound comes through. So I'm unsure whether or not the photo is taken at the sound or at the button click. 
that's something that I wish that they would address. Um, I've seen other comments of people saying that, but for me, what I try and do is just hold still during that time because I know <laughs> that that photo is being taken during that like second, two seconds. It does seem like quite a bit of time. So whenever I'm trying to take a photo of, let's say an animal or something that's moving, it is a little bit more tricky to actually take it with this camera due to that lag. But that's something to be aware of. Just make sure that you're kind of like still it's totally fine for landscapes, obviously, um, and I haven't gotten a lot of blurry photos with just remaining still during that time, but all in all, I do find the sound a little bit annoying. <laughs> okay, so that is my kind of like one month in reaction to the Camp Snap camera. Do I think that you should buy it? When these first came out, I believe they were like 35 or $45. They have gone up since the demand has been high. So it is something to keep in mind. I don't know if this is necessarily worth $65. Um, I think that the $35 price point is a really good spot, especially for kids and the quality of photos that you get from it. I do think of this camera as a fun toy. I think that this is so much fun to give to your kids if they are, you know, interested in photography, like taking pictures of something. It was really cool to give them and then keep the memories of. I think that this is also very fun for parties. So like think of how many people buy disposable cameras for their wedding. I think that this is a perfect, perfect alternative. So what you can do is buy like one or two of these for a wedding, get this passed around at the event. Um, it is really fun to see those like on camera harsh flash photos like a disposable camera and then you have the cameras you can gift these to the bride and groom you can you know just pull the photos off of them and have them i just think that this is a very fun and easy alternative to buying a whole bunch of film disposable cameras there was also a article recently of a bride that got a whole bunch of disposable cameras for her wedding and the film was completely awful it was grainy and green she had no usable photos whatsoever and that's really frustrating when you're buying the camera and developing the film so with this like if you don't get cool shots out of it like it's not really a big deal. You still have the camera. You can still use it later um, and you're not at a complete loss. So I think that this is a really good alternative for those events. Um, and I may or may not get some of these for my friends' weddings coming up. So really excited about that. At the end of the day, I hope it works for you if you do get this camera. I do find it really fun and cute. I like taking the images and using them on my social media stories. I just think it's fun to look back at those memories. I've taken it on road trips and, you know, I'm not looking at the back of the camera when I'm taking photos. And then when I get home from my trip, I look through the photos and just have like that really fun little nostalgia moment. I do enjoy taking this camera with me regardless of how many photos it takes of my bag, um, kind of messed or missed photos in the dark. I still enjoy the photos I get from this camera, so I will probably keep it in my bag, but I will laugh every single time that I hear that come on and start taking pictures in my bag because it does crack me up every time. But the battery does last a very long time, so even though it is taking photos in my bag, it is still good to go. So. I'm gonna keep using mine. I hope that if you buy yours, you love it. Let me know in the comments if you have this camera or if this has helped you decide purchasing this because this is a fun little guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that this is not a concert photography video, but for everyone who's watching that knows my concert photography videos, I promise I'll come back with some music photo stuff soon. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, bye.